Grand Illusion is an exceptionally brash yet warmly humanist anti-war film for being released in 1937. The film takes place during World War I and a number of French soldiers are being held captive by the Germans in prison camps. Captain Beldieu is of elite status as a captured soldier, while Lieutenant Marchal is among the working class prisoners. When they're captured, Beldieu is invited to the lunch of the aviator who shot him down a man by the name of Rittmeister von Rufenstein. The two connect quite well as they are both aristocrats and have mutual acquaintances, sharing similar ranks within their following as well as social outlooks. This does not mean that Baldieu is exempt from being a prisoner of war, however, but it does bring up an interesting connection between the two. Baldieu and Rofenstein seem to get along with each other more than anyone else, despite both being sworn by their countries to be enemies. Both men soon form a connection with the other prisoners. This proves to be a challenge considering there's a language barrier with the British inmates and the German forces that continue to move them from various camps, leaving little time to finish escape plans. Renoir's direction is pretty astounding here. There's a moment when a man is excitedly going through items that he finds a dress and places it upon himself. We then get reactions of the crowd around him, but we don't get the traditional close-up reaction shots of the era. Instead, we get a long shot of the collected reactions, taking in all their faces at once. It's a scene that not only has faith in the viewer to read the many characters of one shot, but also better emphasizes how together the characters are in their struggles. Renoir's depiction of war is not an unfamiliar one, telling the story of how enemies connect and that nationalistic hostilities are ultimately pointless. The film touches on a lot of aspects of class, race, and politics that make war in Europe come about so easily when there is such a lack of unity. What makes the film exceptionally poignant is that only two years after the completion of the film, Europe was once more at war for such similar aspects. A lot of brewing elements that led to World War II are touched upon in the film, not merely the obvious commentary on war ultimately being a futile struggle that solves nothing. Class is obviously a big topic, not just for the differences in how the prisoners of certain social circles are treated, but how the connections of the aristocrats place a perspective on the futility of war. Baldieu and Rofenstein run in similar circles. Their culture, they speak many languages, and have mutual friends. But Renoir doesn't treat these higher class men as the cream of the crop who will be spared and prosper after the war. Quite the opposite, in fact. Renoir's portrayal of the aristocracy is that it is not only dying, but that it must die if society is to prosper past mere politics and war. It's for this reason that when Rofenstein is forced to kill Baldieu, Baldieu not only accepts his fate, but finds a certain glory in his demise. Not merely because the prisoners of Machael and Rosenthal are able to escape the prison due to such a distraction. Renoir's film also somewhat subtly addresses anti-Semitism. For instance, look at the character of Rosenthal. He is posed as a Jewish character that is a reflection of the Rothschild banking family in France. Renoir would later confirm that the inclusion of such a character was meant to attack the anti-Jewish sentiments being pushed forth by the likes of Adolf Hitler. As with the best of such anti-war films, Renoir humanizes the struggle with a great focus on individuality. His film is loaded not just with drama and commentary, but also a lot of simple moments of comedy and camaraderie. These moments of levity are not so much present to offer up that brevity from the enormity of war, but to paint a humanist edge on the conflict. The soldiers recognize these moments of breaking from the violence and persecution as the moments that matter most. It's for this reason that Grand Illusion isn't so much about war as it is about people, and that it's individuality that makes the world so much more enticing, rather than forcing everyone into boxes, battlefields, or prison cells. In the 1950s, Renoir's film was re-released, and he described the picture as, quote, a story about human relationships. Naturally, Grand Illusion has received loads of praise, but I think the best might be from Orson Welles. When asked on The Dick Cavett Show which two films he would take with him on the Ark, preserving film from the end of the world, he chose Grand Illusion as one of the two films that he would bring with him. And if you're curious what the second film was, well, he was a bit on the spot, couldn't really think of an answer, and just said, Uh, something else. <laughs> <laughs>